Attention, grab your popcorn and get ready for a new twist on a classic tale. We present to you Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but not as you know him. This version is a gangster's paradise, where Rudolph finds himself in the midst of a world filled with crime and danger. So sit back by the warm open fire and listen to the untold story about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And FYI, pay close attention. There are some notable quotes. See if you can guess what movie it came from. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It was a not so crazy snowy winter night in the North Pole. A group of senior reindeer were discussing the up and coming reindeer games. What many people don't know is after the first Christmas, Rudolph became a bit arrogant. He felt that he was Santa's favorite reindeer, simply because his nose on that faithful wintry snowy night saved Christmas. The reindeer were meeting to discuss the up and coming Christmas and preparations. But of course, Rudolph was a no show. Soon the conversation switched to Rudolph. Donner, I know Rudolph is your boy, but he's out of control. The meeting was called for 7 p.m. and where is he? Don't worry, Rudolph will be here, said Donner. Prancer asked sarcastically, Donner, so now we're to wait for the prodigal son? The atmosphere was so thick, you could scoop it up with a spoon. Right then and there, the door flung open. It was Rudolph. The room suddenly became quiet as Rudolph staggered into the room. His eyes were bloodshot and glassy. Since his rise to fame, Rudolph never rode alone. He walked into the decked halls with his entourage of rogue reindeer. One of the other reindeers whispered, is this son of a bunk drunk? <laughs> Not phased by the stairs, Rudolph slides his way to Dancer. I know what you're trying to do, Dancer. You gotten Cornelius done pulled my coattail to you long, long ago. You mad cause I got your spot baby, but it's okay, this is my show now. Rudolph turns and looks at all the elves and the reindeer. Are you planning reindeer games? Rudolph smiles and says, listen, don't nothing go down around North Panopolis unless I'm involved. No trick or treating, no baking cookies, no nothing. A toy gets donated in the park, I want in. Christmas is around the corner and taxes are due. No one rides for free. Prancer jumps up. You have one good season, and now you're the goat? Prancer, typically composed and graceful, felt his patience waning. Rudolph, there's more to Christmas than just showmanship. It's about spreading joy and enchantment. You're too focused on being the center of attention. You know what, Rudolph? You're everyone's problem. I don't like you because you're dangerous. That's right, Prancer. <laughs> I am dangerous. Rudolph's nose began to glow bright crimson red. The icy tension hung in the air, and the spectators watched as Rudolph and Prancer, once comrades in the magical Christmas journey, now stood at odds. The clash of personalities echoed through the room. In fear of what would happen next, Donner stepped between Rudolph and Prancer. Rudolph, please. This is not the time, nor the place. Rudolph's nose began to soften. You know what, Prancer, said Rudolph, today, I'm feeling gracious. Rudolph turns to walk out the door with his crew, but then he stops and says, I remember when you wouldn't let me play in any reindeer games. Now look at you. Now, now you need me. Santa isn't going to make his trip without his number one stunner. Enraged, Prancer yells, we don't want or need you. Rudolph paused before walking out the door. <laughs> I may not be the reindeer you want to lead the sleigh but I'm the reindeer you need. Meanwhile, elsewhere at the North Pole, in the heart of the frosty Arctic resides old Jack Frost. Now Jack Frost wasn't taken too kind to Rudolph's rise to fame, both on the good and the bad parts of North Polopolis. You see, that Christmas season, when Rudolph got at Santa's sleigh through the worst snowstorm known to man, Jack Frost had called in a couple of favors, many favors, just to ground Santa's sleigh which pretty much left him in a what they call a considerable debt. And after paying back this debt, oh, so long it took him to pay back this debt, this also left him a bit frosty. It was that day after Christmas, the very day after Christmas, Jeff Frost goes to Santa's workshop, beats on the door. Santa, I know you're in there. 
Don't you have the guts to play for fudge? But everyone knows Santa's not about that life. Santa just stayed inside. However, a voice from the barn arose from someone just his type. I'm your Huckleberry. Jack turned to see who it was, and it was Rudolph giving a sly smile saying, that's my game. Before any further escalation, people from both parties came between the two. The Grinch and the abominable snowman grabbed Jack and then they were off, disappearing into the snow. A couple months later at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Ice Cream Saloon, Rudolph, who at this point was an opportunist for trouble, caught Jack Frost slipping. Hey Jack, you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Jack froze for a second and then he just happened to be alone. Rudolph slowly trotted towards him and said, do you ever read the Bible, Jack? Well, there's a particular verse I like to use for such a moment like this. Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the iniquities and the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison my brothers, and you know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. <laughs> well, sir, Rudolph commenced to land the smackdown on old Jack Frost. They said you could hear the thumpity thump thump all the way down the street. Now that Molly Whoppin put on old Jack Frost that wintry afternoon was one that he will never forget. Now bruised, battered, and scarred, this truly left Jack Frost bitter to the bone. So he and his henchmen sat down and hatched a devious plan to bring an end to Christmas cheer and to root off the red-nosed reindeer. Honestly, I think he was more consumed by the jealousy over Rudolph's popularity. Although he despised Santa Claus, he really hated Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. After the plan was set, Jack Frost stood up and said to his cohorts, we will see the end of Christmas and the end of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Act two, taken. Mrs. Claus heard about the conversation and was worried. Santa and Mrs. Claus never had any children, so when she would see Rudolph get teased and bullied, she would always baby him. She would give him the first pick of her fresh snickerdoodle cookies. Oh, how she loved that little reindeer. When he would come to see her, the first thing she would do is she would squeeze his rosy red cheeks and kiss him on his little red nose. Those were the good old days. Those were before the dark times, before Yukon Cornelius. Yukon Cornelius was a seasoned explorer and saved Rudolph from the abominable snowman. And from what I was told, they had many a great adventure. When Rudolph was stranded on Christmas Island, he saw so many discarded toys. He understood, well, he knew what it felt like to be a misfit and an outcast. That's when Rudolph began to resent the other reindeer. One evening, Rudolph could tell Yukon Cornelius was feeling a little edgy. Yukon jumped up and said, I'm leaving to go get some candy cane. Hours turned into days, days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months. Yukon Cornelius never returned. Some say he finally found what he had been searching for and never just came back. While others say the kin of the abominable snowman found him and gave him an ice bath. Rudolph longed for acceptance and the one friend he had left him. Soon, Rudolph started running his own version of reindeer games. The first rule of reindeer games is to not talk about reindeer games. The second rule of reindeer games is not to talk about reindeer games. But back to the present. Rudolph sat alone in the stall. He was feeling dejected and upset. Just then, his phone rang. When he looked down, he saw it was Mrs. Claus. He hesitated for a moment before answering. He was really unsure if he wanted to talk to anyone. But he has never ignored Mrs. Claus. So of course he answered the phone. Her company voice on the other end caused a wave of relief to wash over him. Rudolph, my dear, I heard about the argument you had with Prancer. I know things can get a little tense around here. Did you get those cookies I sent you? 
Yes, Mrs. Claus, I got the cookies. You know, Rudolph, if they hate on you, you must be doing your job. Both Mrs. Claus and Rudolph laughed. He loved them when she talked street. All of a sudden, there came such a clatter. Rudolph heard the ruckus and asked, what's the matter? Mrs. Claus, are you okay? Rudolph, there's someone in the house. Rudolph takes a deep breath and says to Mrs. Claus, now the next part of this is gonna be very important. They're going to take you. I need you to stay focused and this is key. You will have five, maybe 10 seconds, very important seconds to concentrate. Shout out everything you see about them, hair color, eye color, tall, short, scars, anything you see, you understand? They're there, I can hear them. Mrs. Claus tried to scream. I see red shoes, green fur, white furry feet, as she dropped the phone. The phone then was picked up and Rudolph heard breathing on the other side. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for ransom, I can tell you, I don't have money. But what I do have is a particular set of skills. Skills that have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare to people like you. If you let Mrs. Claus go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will ice you. Good luck. The phone dropped. Everything was silent. Act 3. The Rescue. Amidst the worried whispers, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer stood tall, his crimson nose illuminating the dark room. The elves with their pointy hats and determined expressions pleaded for help. Even the stork reindeer, usually preoccupied with their own preparations, looked to Rudolph to guide them through this crisis. Desperate for help, Prancer swallowed his pride and said, It's the worst storm ever, and if we could find her, we don't even have the manpower to save her. It's an evil world we live in, says Rudolph, as he leaned back sucking on some candy cane. You sure you want to ride with old Rudolph? You know, normally I would tell you to skippity do die, but because Mrs. Claus is like a mother to me, I'm going to help you. But just remember this. Remember, you came to me. Rudolph snapped his fingers and waved his hand. Red Five walked up to Prancer and gave him and the elves a map of the objective area. What you think? I'm going to let some slicky boy snatch from me and me not respond? Dog, I was on mission before you came here. We already have hubs on the ground. They will be providing intel and overwatch. Dasher and Dancer, you will take two teams of elves and infiltrate from the east. Red Six with his extraction team will ingress from the west. We are coming in hot and fast, so ensure that you are flying nap of the earth. Dasher and Dancer looked around. Nap of the what? He means fly low, dude. Once I have Mrs. Claus, said Red Six, we will egress no later than 2,400 hours. This is a black op mission. If you are discovered, I will deny all knowledge and you will pay the price. Failure is not an option. Jack Frost must have called one of his favors in. Heavy winds made it hard to navigate. With Rudolph leading the team, we had a reference point. Later that night, the strike team were set in their positions outside of the target building. Red 6, this is Red 5, over. Red 5, this is Red 6, send transmission. We have eyes on target. The primary is on site. How copy, over. Name of Charlie. Red 5 noticed something was a little bit off and wasn't in the initial game plan. So he calls out to Red 6. Red 6, this is Red 5, drop 1. Red 5, this is Red 6, drop 1 out. Prancer starts to look around look at the elves on his team and everyone seems to be puzzled to what's going on. Granted, it's a lot of military jargon that really no one has a clue about, but still, a plan is a plan. Comms went silent. Prancer then notices that there is a faint red glow moving towards the target building. Prancer calls out over the comms. Red 6, this is strike 1. But Red 6 didn't answer. Strike 1, this is Red 5, radio silence. 6 is calling an audible. 
Down at the strike house, Rudolph signals a red five that he was going in. Rudolph pushes the door open. With snow whisking behind him, he enters the room. The group in the room were caught by surprise. I'm your huckleberry, Rudolph said. Jack Frost was startled, his eyes looking like saucers. Why Jack Frost? Looking like somebody done walked over your grave. Jack Frost looks around the room. He was shaken, but not stirred. Fight's not with you, Rudolph. I'll beg to differ, sir. We started a game we never finished. Play for fudge, remember? I was just fooling about. I wasn't, and this time, it's legal. Rudolph shows his license as a member of the Santa Sleigh team. All right, Red, let's do it. Rudolph arrogantly opens his arms and says to Jack Frost, I get it, I see now. You've been looking for a way to take Christmas out. A little trickery, some kidnapping, and poof, <laughs> here I am. Jack Frost, after looking at the group, says to Rudolph, well, I am a bit surprised that you did decide to crash my party, but that's the thing. You keep thinking it's about you, Rudy. What's really about is a cold, cold day that never ends. And no freak with a red nose and no fat guy running around giving toys to some snotty no kids is going to take that from me. Jack chuckles as he continues to monologue. The thing is, you and Christmas are nothing more than a derivative of the season that I created. But wait, there's more. What is a party without a few more surprises, eh, Rudy? Jack claps his hands, and out of the shadows comes Yukon Cornelius. What's up, Rudy? Yukon Cornelius then goes and sits next to Jack Frost, both smiling as if they were on checkmate. Jack continues to monologue. Yeah. We taking over, first Christmas, then winter, and soon the whole world. We gonna bum rush this whole thing. Now if the people cooperate, oh, it's gonna be lovely. They gonna be a little frosty. If they don't, well, it's <laughs> like Beirut. The whole world gonna become hostages to a new ice age. Not swayed by Jack Frost and Cornelius plan, Rudolph walks around the table, pulls out a chair and sits down. You remember what a hasa is, Cornelius? It's a pig that don't fly straight, and neither do you. Rudolph paused and pulled out a candy cane and put it in his mouth. Mmm, this is one tasty candy cane. You really should try it. Do you know what they call a snail in France, Cornelius? Cornelius replies, Escargo? Ooh, look at the big brain on Corny. Rudolph sits up in his chair. Staring at Cornelius. No matter what I did, I stayed loyal to you. I made what I could on the side, but I never turned on you. A man who has no word, he's a cockroach. Me, all I have is my word and my jingle bells. And I don't break neither for anyone. Rudolph began to address the room. Let me ask you people one thing. What did Mrs. Claus ever do to you? Nothing. You gonna let this chunky monkey and freezer burn snowflake convince you to snatch a lady who would fill this room with cookies? All because a few of you didn't get what you wanted for Christmas? Seems to me one good deed might put you on the nice list. Remember, Santa always checks twice. Let's be clear, without me, regardless, Christmas is gonna happen. Without you, snow is gonna fall. And the rest of y'all, because of what you did today, stock is gonna be full with coal. The room looked around and disbelieved like, ooh, hmm. But there must have been some magic in that speech because all of Jack Frost's goons traded sides. They untied Mrs. Claus and they escorted her right out the door. Soon you heard the sounds of jingle bells streak across the sky. Rudolph stands up with a crooked smile, slings the table to the side. Rudolph says, what is best in life? Jack stammers on his word. What? Rudolph's nose begins to get brighter red. What is best in life? Oh, you don't know? Well, allow me to retort. To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentations of their kin. But it seems, <laughs> as he sat down, I'm in transition. A quagmire, if you will. You see, I only have enough molly whopping 
just for one. Now, I brought my boys all the way over here for some reindeer games. You feel me? Now, we can do this like gentlemen or we can get gangster with it. Choice is yours. All I know is somebody catching these hooks. It seems the tide had changed and the hunter is now the hunted. Cornelius whispered in Jack Frost's ear, mm, bruh, you on your own. In sheer disbelief, Jack Frost screams, where are you going? As he stammered on his words, why you disloyal fool? Okay, okay, you gonna do this to me? Corny, you gonna do this to me? That's okay, that's okay. I'm Jack Frost, baby. I'm Jack Frost. I'm the real deal. As he started to bounce around, said, I'm a star, baby. I'm a star. Needless to say, Rudolph opened up his second can of Molly Whopping and Molly Whop Jack for the second time. What's that you asked? What happened to old Yukon Cornelius as he went out the back door? <laughs> old Red Five got one with the force and just let go. Now, I'm going to take a break from the story and simply say, if you're not a Star Wars fan, you're not going to get that one. <laughs> Clearly, that was a quote. <laughs> anyway, back to the story. Rudolph was the last to RTB. That's return to base for all you non-military folks. Seth had made it back from his recon and the elves were all over the place trying to explain to him what happened. With Mrs. Claus safe, Rudolph and his crew were about to DD mile back to North Polopolis when they heard someone yell, Rudolph! Rudolph turned his head to see who called his name. It was Prancer. Prancer trotted to him and said, You are still dangerous. As he cracked a smile, You can be my wingman anytime. Rudolph, for the first time in a long while, smiled and said, Bull chips, you can be mine. <laughs> and if this was an actual movie, we'd be at the freeze frame and Chris would be rolling. I hope you enjoyed my little story about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I know it's a little bit off the wall. And it's definitely one that came from this mind. And maybe, and just maybe, if enough people like it, this podcast will go down in history. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night.